see there's one right there. Watch if I push it. They're filled with water. So these little blisters are all over the bottom. You can see that tiny little crack that I didn't get with my third coat. I've been making these acrylic plexiglass boxes to do real-time testing to see how these products work. And I just did a Schluter Curdy and Laticrete Hydroban glass box test. I'll put the link down in the description below if you're interested in seeing that. But these glass box tests are awesome because I can see what's going on without having to tear it off and I can see it in real time as it happens. So I'm so stoked you're here. Let's get into the procedure and how I did this test. So the typical installation that I see on the internet or Instagram or the information that you guys send me is typically red guard is placed over a dry pack mortar bed on a shower pan, then it's spread up the walls and everything. But the most crucial area is always the shower pan and the curb. So what I did to emulate a shower pan is put dry pack mortar in the plexiglass before I put the red guard membrane on. So it's important to note that I did download the technical data sheet from custom building products before I started in on this. And one thing to note is with mortar beds, there's no specified time that it says to wait for the mortar bed to cure before you apply red guard. So what I did is I just waited 24 hours till the mortar bed was hard and it was the light color, it was dry. And as a matter of fact, you can see that light color through the glass box, which is really nice. So I let the mortar bed cure for 24 hours and then I did the first coat. Now, while there's no specified curing time on the mortar beds in the data sheet, what is in the data sheet is the rate of application that you need to use to apply the red guard. If you go to page three of the data sheet, it says to meet the requirements of IAMPO, two coats should be applied at a rate of 80 square feet per gallon each coat. So 80 square feet per gallon each coat. So that would mean that one gallon of red guard would cover 40 square feet. Again, that's two coats at 80 square feet per gallon. If we did the two coats, that would equal 40 square feet finished for two coats. So now that I had the specified rate of application, I needed to do a little bit of math to figure out the exact amount to use on this little glass box test. So what I did is I calculated out the square footage of the glass box itself, the, the mortar layer and going up the sides. And what I came up with was 2.88 square feet. So the area that I was gonna put the red guard on was 2.88 square feet. Now, if I take that number 2.88, I divide it by 80, it gives me a percentage, so that's 3.6%. So this glass box is 3.6% of the area of 80. So now that I have that percentage, if I want to turn that into fluid ounces, which is probably the easiest way for me to measure, is in one gallon there's 128 fluid ounces. So if I go 3.6%, that's 0.0. 36 times 128, what I come up with is 4.6 fluid ounces. So each coat is gonna get 4.6 fluid ounces. So that's really easy. So I just take my measuring cup, fill it up to 4.6 fluid ounces, and I know exactly the amount to spread on each coat. Now I applied the first coat very carefully with a brush doing my best to make it as even as possible. Again, this 80 square feet per gallon rate is actually pretty heavy, and it's a lot heavier than I see most people installing Red Guard. You know, typically when somebody puts on Red Guard, what I usually see is somebody just using a roller and they go over, they just go over really lightly, almost like a thin coat of paint. Well, that is not the specified rate of application to get to do it at 80 square feet per gallon, you need to leave it on there pretty thick. So I used my brush and put it on as evenly as I could as possible, using up all 4.6 fluid ounces to ensure that I was getting it at the correct rate of application. So also in the data sheet, it, it talks about the drying time of each coat, and which I found across the board, I have found that the, what they say it's gonna dry at 
typically does not happen. They said from one to an hour and a half, but then it also says up to 12 hours. So each coat could take up to 12 hours of dry time. What I've found when you apply it at the correct rate, it's typically four to five hours it will dry. And that's kind of, you know, right now it's been about 70 degrees here at springtime. It's pretty nice. So it will vary with temperature and humidity. I completed the first coat at five o'clock in the evening. So I just waited till the next day at the same time I applied the second coat. Again, it was really easy to make sure that I got the correct rate of application because I just measured out that 4.6 fluid ounces again and made sure as I spread it, I coated it evenly and used up all the material that was out there. One thing to note also is that Red Guard is a lot thinner than some other waterproofing membranes, which is part of the reason why it's not as expensive. It's a lot less expensive than Laticrete Hydroban, but Hydroban, if you've used it before, what you'll notice is, is that you can apply it a lot thicker. It stands up, it has more body to it. Red Guard is uh, very loose. Being that thin, it's just kind of hard to do. But at any rate, I accomplished it. I got the 4.6 fluid ounces spread out evenly, got my nice second coat, let that dry, and then that was Friday night, so I just let that, I was just gonna leave that for the weekend, make sure those two coats cured really well before I did a water test. But what happened is, is I had to come back on Sunday, which was actually Easter Sunday, but my son got some new uh, grips for his BMX bikes, but we had to use a compress my compressor in the shop here to get his old grips off and put the new grips on. So while I was here, I did a visual inspection of the two coats. So they'd been drying for two days at that point. And what I noticed was is that there was cracking in some of the areas where the horizontal and vertical planes met. Right in the corner, I noticed some cracking. I was like, oh great. So the two coats, I know for sure, I can't fill this thing up with water because it'll just leak. So what I did is I actually did a third coat just in the corners just to make sure I filled in any of the cracking that occurred. So I went around all of the corners really good and I did that third coat covering up all the cracks as best that I could. So that was yesterday, today's Monday. So, so starting it with the dry pack on Wednesday, the first coat was Thursday, the second coat was Friday, the third coat was Sunday, now finally today I came in and it looked nice. It looked like the third coat had covered the cracks. So I figured this is the time, let's fill it up with water. So at 8 p.m. this morning, I filled it up with water. And it is now 5 p.m. Again, I'm done with my work day. Today was an awesome day. I, I actually had three coaching calls and I got to help Tom, I got to help Darren, and I got to help Vince with their shower projects. It was really cool. I love doing the coaching. The one-on-one -on -one stuff is really awesome. Anyways, I did that. It's almost time to go home. I'm shooting this video. It's now five o'clock. This has been soaking in water for eight hours, and I've done a little time lapse. One thing to note, and I've brought this up before in one of my live streams, I talked about how these liquid waterproofings they change colors when they get wet, which is really weird if you think about if it's a waterproof product, why does it change colors again um, from the dark to the light, like almost like the product itself is wet? If it was completely waterproof, it would seem like they would just stay the same color that if you put water on it wouldn't affect it. But what this time lapse shows is that it didn't take hardly any time at all for the dark red dry, once I put water in it, to turn the light pink color again. And gradually it started in one spot and then it just kind of grew. For me, that's hard to wrap my mind around that um, it changes colors when it gets wet. So actually the, the whole bottom has almost turned to the light pink as it sat for eight hours. So let's check it out. Let's see what's going on with it right now. Okay, so here we go. Here's all my timestamps that I put on there. And we got it filled with water. As you can see, it's the light pink color. And check it out. I already have some leaking and I, I first noticed this, this leak happening. And it took about three or four hours. It was right around lunchtime that I noticed it started coming through. So I did a little time lapse on that and you can 
just see the moisture growing a little bit. Uh, it's also it's also on this side you can see we got dry mortar here and we got wet there. So it's leaking in that corner. And so let's get this water out of here. Okay, so here is the corner that's leaking. And when I was uh, using the vacuum, I actually popped some of these little blisters that were popping up. I was trying to be careful with the hose and not mess anything up, but, but these guys right here, those, those just cropped up from the vacuum hose. And you can see those little blisters are all over the entire surface. So let's see. So yeah, and they're filled with water. So let me see here. See, there's one right there. Watch if I push it. They're filled with water. So these little blisters are all over the bottom. So there must be a tiny little crack. So there must be a tiny little crack in there that I can't see. But you can see my third coat is actually a little bit lighter color. Then you can see that tiny little crack that I didn't get with my third coat. So, so let's see what happens if I cut a section out. The red guard is just kind of, I can't even peel it up in a layer. You know, I was hoping to peel it up in like, maybe I get a margin trowel. Yeah, I was hoping to peel it up in like a layer to see what what's happening, but it's, it's, it's really kind of, um, it's just falling apart into little flakes. Like I want a membrane to be intact and stretchy, especially at this thickness. Let me see. So yeah, that's some of the membrane, but it's just really fragile. It just kind of falls apart. So yeah, all of these little bubbles, you see the water just comes up in them, it's really kind of junky. So here, I'll show you, I'm gonna do one of the dry areas and hopefully that gives me the, um, to show you kind of what I'm looking for, what I would expect a membrane to be. So yeah, here's the way that the membrane should look. It has a nice um, elastic, stretchy feel to it. It's got a nice mill thickness on it. Uh, I think 22 mils is uh, what, they, what they want, finish thickness, but that's about right. So you know, you couldn't, you can stretch it um, and it's all good, but the problem was you know, the stuff, so this is the stuff that stayed dry on the side. This is the stuff that was wet on the bottom. And you see it just falls apart. So there you have it. Take it for what it's worth. This was my glass box testing. I showed you my procedure. Um, and... You guys tell me what I did wrong. Obviously with, with this spot right here, it was pretty easy to tell that I did see a little crack. I mean, that stuff happens and maybe we could use this as just uh, a word of caution when you're doing it to really, really, really check for cracks because 
even in a small area like this where I'm being really, really careful to apply it in the correct thickness. Um, there's no job site conditions that I needed to worry about. I only had to worry about this tiny little spot and even doing it at that, waiting that long between coats, I still ended up with cracking that led to a leak. So this liquid membrane, I guess my point is, is that it's not as easy as it seems. It's not as easy as just painting it on. And that's what I see a lot on the internet, on Instagram. You know, I see a lot of installers. They're just painting red guard over mortar and calling it a shower pan. And I look at it and I'm going, oh man, that's not thick enough. And are they water testing? And odds are is like most people who are using red guard aren't water testing it. So they wouldn't know about these little blisters that popped up, which again, I have no idea why it happened, but maybe some of you guys out there can can fill me in on why it would turn pink like that, blister up and just fall apart in water. And um, yeah, so uh, again, these videos are, are meant to educate and help start the conversation, come up with solutions. If you do have the solutions, a better way to do it, even though I read the technical data sheet, and again, I'm not sponsored by any manufacturers of these products. My videos are self-supporting through you watching them, through you buying merchandise like this, some days you make money, some days you make friends t-shirt. If you'd like to support us, please go to tilecoach.com, pick up some merchandise, sign up for a coaching plan, join our team membership, one of those things, and it will help me to make these videos, make them unbiased uh, so we can all learn and see how they work in real world applications. So before I go, I love you. I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.